The Roy Rogers Show. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his Golden Palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West. With Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. didn't win his badge by warming a chair. Maybe he left a note saying when he'll be back. Well, let's go on, Roy. We're still a long way from Mineral City, and Pat and I have to get back to the cafe. Then we've never met the new sheriff of Carson County, and knowing him might come in handy sometime. Well, I guess you're right. Pat, for pity's sake, if you can learn mind reading from that thing, I'll eat it for breakfast. Uh, oh, go ahead and laugh. But this here is a science. Mm, only people with a special kind of talent can do it. Meaning you, I suppose. Well, to tell you the truth, I got it from a mom. <laughs> she used to be able to tell what I was thinking before I thunk it. <laughs> hello. Well, hello. Hi. Are you the sheriff's little girl? No, ma'am. I'm Janie Howard. You don't have to ask her what she's doing here. I can read her mind like an open book. She's lost. How can I be lost as long as I've got hold of the Lord's hand? Out of the mouths of babes comes wisdom. It's my horse that's lost. Have you maybe seen a ginger horse? A ginger horse? Yes, sir. He's just the color of ginger. Like his name. He isn't much to look at. But he's awful nice. I'm sure he is, honey. How did this ginger horse get lost? A man stole him. Somebody shot off a gun. And then a man ran out of the trees, jumped on my horse, and rode off. It's an awful long way into town, but I thought I'd better tell the sheriff. I can read her mind as plain as day. She thinks you're the sheriff. No, sir. He isn't Mr. Williams. This is Roy Rogers, Janie, and I'm Dale Evans. And I'm Pat Brady, but you can call me Pat. Janie, this fellow that stole your horse, what did he look like? He was so far away. I didn't see him very good. But he was big. Big as my daddy. Where was the shot fired from, honey? Like I said, in the trees. I'll show you if you want. Daddy and I live near there. Not in the big ranch house. We live in the little one. I think we'd better see what this is all about. Mm. with a H bar E. Looks like he fell and broke his leg and his rider shot him. Certainly was in a hurry to get somewhere fast. That's probably why he stole Janie's horse. Dale, you better go back to Janie's house. Look around there. I'll look some more here and join you later. Right, Roy. Come on, Bullet. I just got here. Which makes it mighty convenient for me. Just hand over that money. I'll take those pretty guns of yours, too. 
Well, at least you could let me introduce myself. I'm Roy Rogers. Rogers? Yes. You can call the United States Marshal at Mineral City. He'll establish my identity. So what? You ain't the first lawman that's gone wrong. Besides, this money was stolen from Mr. Early here. And for all I know, you're in cahoots with Jim Howard. Howard? Are you Janie's father? Why, how did you know? I met her in town this morning. She told me someone had stolen her horse. And the fellow who took it shot the horse he was riding after it broke its leg. And that horse was branded with an H bar E. What? That's mine. That's the horse I reported stolen, Sheriff. We'll take care of that later. Right now, I'm taking these two into town. You better come along, Horace, and sign a complaint. Hey, this is ridiculous. You know I didn't take that money. Get your hat and coat. that picture of you and Ginger. I didn't hear you come in, Roy. Neither did I, and I got ears like a cougar. Did you find Ginger, Mr. Rogers? No, but we're on his trail. Listen, Jenny, you don't happen to have some coffee out in the kitchen, do you? It's cold, but I'll warm it up for you. Fine, that's all right. I'm on the Dodge. What? Huh? Yes, I found some stolen money in an old line shack just as the sheriff came in. He was taking me and another fellow to town, and I give him the slip. It's lucky I had an extra pair of guns in my saddlebags. Well, didn't you tell him who you were? Yes, but it sure didn't impress the sheriff any. Who was the other fellow, Roy? Well, that's just it. Jim Howard, Jamie's father. Oh, no. The poor kid. What'd he do it for? I don't know. I'm not sure that he did. The money belonged to a man named Horace Early. It was his horse that we found shot. He claimed it had been stolen. How are we going to tell Janie? We're not until we're sure. I'll admit it looks bad for Jim Howard, but it looks even worse for me. If you ain't careful, Roy, you're going to find yourself in a who's got for you can say Peter Piper pecked a peck, pecked a pie, pecked a pole. Anyway, for you can say it. Hey, Dale. What is it? This page in the Bible. Look, it's been read so many times you can close the book and open right up to it again. Hey, look at this verse underlined. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Here's your copy, Mr. Rogers. Thanks, Jeannie. Daddy reads that verse in the Bible every day. He's read it so much I know it by heart. So do I, but I have a hard time following it. If a man cusses me, I'm liable to cuss him right back. And if he persecutes me, I'll bounce him right on the beezer. Daddy says if you do that, you're just as wrong as the other men. And two wrongs can't ever put things right. Your daddy said that? Yes, sir. He said we should love our enemies and do good to them so we can show them the right way to act. Roy, if he believes that. I know, Dale. But as Pat said, sometimes it's hard to live up to. Janie, whose house is that I passed down the road, the big one? That's Mr. Early's house. Early? We used to live over there, but Mommy got sick and died. And Daddy lost his share of the ranch. That's when we moved over here. Janie, will you excuse us? Where are you going, Mr. Rogers? We're going to find a ginger horse. Dale, you and Pat go back to town and see if you can find out why Jim Howard lost his share of the ranch. I'll see if I can pick up the trail of Janie's horse. I'd like to go along with you, Roy. You can't. Somebody might see you with me. And I am a wanted man. Well, I guess I can be a wanted man just as well as you. Besides, I want to know what's so important about that ginger horse. Never argue with a woman, Roy, unless you get a half a mile running start. Did you see any sign of ginger? I picked up his tracks and he headed straight to Horace Early's place. Then Howard must have stolen the money after he took Janie's horse. If it was Howard. Listen, Dale, you stay here and keep out of sight. If trouble starts, head for cover. Right. Bullet, stay with her.
You wait here till you get home. I didn't want to sign that complaint, Lon. I can't believe it, Jim did it. I've known him for years. He claimed some fella phoned him and said you wanted to see him up at the lion shack. Now, why would I want to meet him in a place like that? I'd go over to his place and he could come here. You didn't say you did. That's Jim's story. He claimed he got there and waited until he got hungry and he found some coffee in an old can and he took a bucket and went out to the stream for water and that's where we nabbed him. Yeah, I still don't know why he wanted to steal the money. If he needed it, all he had to do was ask me. Well, maybe he thought you'd turn him down. Sheriff. Looks like he's taking cover. Keep your eyes peeled, Horace. You be ready to run when I give you the word. Roy, you can't shoot them all. No, but maybe I can scare them off with a few wild shots. Reloading. Got it. Careful. You may be playing possum. We've been tricked. You know, I'm beginning to believe he really is Roy Rogers. tell Jeannie about her father. Just that he was detained in town. But she isn't worried. She says the Lord will keep an eye on him. Have faith, hope, and charity. That's the way to live successfully. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. Do good to your enemies. And the Lord above you is sure to be. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. <laughs> Did you bring Ginger home, Mr. Rogers? Not yet, but it won't be long now. Isn't it about your bedtime, Janie? Yes, sir. But maybe I'd better wait up for Daddy. He might want something to eat. Now, don't you worry about that, Janie. You just let us take care of everything. All right. Good night, Miss Dale. Good night, hon. Good night, Mr. Rogers. Good night, Janie. Roy, we can't let that little girl down. We've got to do something. It's Pat. Well, I found out about Horace Early and Jim Howard, and you won't like any part of it. Oh, I thought it was Daddy. No, it's only me. I was just going to say my prayers. Since the Lord has taken care of Daddy, do you think it would be too much to ask him to keep an eye on Ginger, too? Of course not, honey. The Lord takes care of all of his children. Including Ginger horses. Well, then, I'll just thank him for looking after everybody. Poor kid. And her paw shut up in jail. Someone's coming. It's Horace Early.
Come in. Oh, good evening. I didn't know there was anyone home except Janie. I'm Dale Evans, and this is Pat Brady. We're friends of Janie's. Well, then I can stop worrying about her. I, I just rode over to see how she was getting along. You, uh, you don't mind if I get a drink of water before I start back? find out about Horace Early and Jim Howard? Well, like Janie said, Early and Howard used to be partners. And Howard's wife took sick, and he borrowed money from Early on his half of the ranch. Then after Mrs. Howard up and died, why, he couldn't pay Early back. So that's why they moved into this here place. Early let him have it, so as him and Janie could have a place to stay. Well, it looks like I've been wrong about Horace Early. But then, why has Jim Howard been reading this verse in the Bible so much? After I read that, I was just sure that Horace Early had tricked Jim Howard out of his share of the ranch. No. I asked the lawyer who wrote up the papers himself. He said it was all fair and square. I could tell he was telling the truth because I could read his mind like an open book. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I've got to get into that jail the first thing in the morning and have a talk with Jim Howard. The jail? You get in there and you won't ever get out. I will if you do your part. Oh, I'll do my part. What is my part? What's going on out here? Backfire. You do that again and I'll arrest you for disturbing the peace. Now, just a minute. Is there any law in this here town that says I can't backfire? Well, no. Well, then you just try to heave me in the who's gal. Just try it. Well, I didn't expect to see you here, Rogers. Well, I'm in this as deep as you are, Jim. Either we both get out or we may be doing time together. Are you threatening me? No, I ain't threatening anybody. All I want are the answers to some questions. But you better talk fast. We haven't got much time. I'm just standing on my rights as an American citizen, according to the Constitution, the Congress, and the President of the United States. Did you know the money was in that wood box? No, I didn't even know it had been stolen. Well, tell me, when you borrowed the money, did you deed your interest to the ranch to Horace Early? No, I signed what I thought was a promissory note. The money that Horace loaned me was not one-tenth what my interest was worth. Then the signature on that deed must have been forged. Uh, that's the trouble, Mr. Rogers. The signature is mine. Do you know why I can't read your mind? Because you ain't got any. That's why. Why, you young squirt. Go and crawl in a gopher hole before I forget I'm wearing this badge. You'll be hearing from me, Jim. Listen, when you go into your mind reading act, don't forget what you're supposed to say. It's engraved right here in stone. Hello, Muriel. Give me the sheriff's office. And everybody else get off the line. Hello, Sheriff. Roy Rogers just rode into my yard. What? Hold it, Sheriff. Dale Evans just came in. Well, hold him. All of them, till I get there. Well, if there's any way of clearing Janie's father, I want to be in on it. Trying to get Horace Early to show his hand is a long chance, but we've got to take it. Pat and I have got a scheme all worked out. You're here, suppose you park your hardware right there on the table. Now, get over there and 
Sit down. We'll wait for the sheriff. You didn't say anything about him sticking us up. Well, I didn't think he'd be that foolish. Hold it. Get his gun, Dale, and keep him covered. I'll be back in a little while. All right, you get over there and sit down. Keep those hands on that desk. Pat, do you notice anything peculiar in this room? Like a dark cloud hanging over it? Huh? Oh, I get you. I mean, I sure do. It's somebody in this here house. Somebody close enough for me to touch. Mr. Brady is a mind reader. A what? This fella has something on his conscience. It's coming in clear now. Something about a man writing his name on a piece of paper. Is the man worried? Huh? I'll say he is. He's so worried he doesn't notice the other piece of paper stuck under the one he's assigning. Yes, sir, it's the old switcheroo. Sign an IOU, and it turns out to be a deed to everything you own in the world. And this man, whose mind I'm a reading, knows he swindled his best friend. Very good, Mr. Brady. But it won't work. Jim's signature on that deed is valid. He admits it himself. If you want a confession, suppose you ask him for one. Jim Howard never stole that money. You did. Well, why should I do that? I had the ranch. What else could I want? Peace of mind. Night after night, you sat here gazing across that field at the house of a man who was your best friend, knowing that instead of hating you for what you'd done to him, he was praying for you. Now, every time you met Jim Howard, it was like meeting your own conscience. You'd have killed him, except that would put your own neck in a rope. So you decided to frame him to get rid of him. But what you were really trying to do was get rid of your own sense of guilt. He was crazy. Did they come and gun him for me so I could shoot him down? He sat there night after night reading his Bible until I couldn't stand it anymore. All right, Sheriff. Come on. You, Mr. Rogers. If you want more evidence, Sheriff, take a look in the barn. The barn? Yes, you'll find Janie's ginger horse in there. Dyed black. But, Roy, what made you so sure I didn't take the money? Your Bible told me. My Bible? Yes, the one you read every night. About loving those that persecute you. And anyone who believes that isn't the type to steal, not even from his enemies. Well, I didn't want it to be Jim, but doggone it, everything pointed to him. Well, that was Horace's idea. Actually, his plan was very simple. Just about as simple as this, Sheriff. <laughs> you see, Horace planted that money in the line shack, intending Jim here to be caught with it. He didn't figure on his horse breaking his leg. Yep, sure to put him on a spot. He couldn't afford to be found anywhere near that shack. So that's why he took Janie's horse. And after he took it, he didn't dare get rid of it, so he up and dyed it black. But the collar didn't fool the Lord. He kept his eye on him just the same. <laughs> no one, Janie. Not even Horace Early can fool the good Lord. Faith, hope, and charity. Would you, Mr. Rogers? Sure, Janie. Be glad to. What key? F. All right. Everybody join in. Okay. Have faith, faith, hope, and charity. That's the way to live successfully. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. Do good to your enemies, and the Lord above you are sure to please. How do I know? The Bible tells me so. Don't worry about tomorrow, just be real good today. The Lord will be beside you and guide you all the way. Have faith, hope, and charity. 
Happy trail to you. 